the um, Masters of Sustainable Development. And, and I guess it's, it's going to be closely followed by the other two presenters, Neil and, um, and Adam. And essentially the Masters of Sustainable Development degree. It's fundamentally, as, as a lot of our Masters programs that deal with the environment, it's, it's trying to address the big question in town is how we're going to respond to climate change. Um, but coupled in that is this notion about how we're thinking around restructuring our economy, um, restructuring the way that we connect, the way that we make decisions, responding to each of the 17 um, sustainable development goals, which the United Nations is, is really pushing hard to achieve by 2030. And all of this, all of this change is going to happen, or it needs to happen basically within 20 years. And if we don't do it in 20 years, I think the technical term is we're stuffed. So the education that you guys get out of this particular degree is not only pivotal, it's absolutely essential. Um, there were some statistics I was listening today in a, in a uh, YouTube where we could be entering the sixth extinction, whereby in the next 80 years, we could be losing 50% of the species on earth. So this is, this is the importance, if you like. So what does sustainable development mean? So this is not a lecture per se, but fundamentally what we're trying to do is understand this connection or nexus between people, our planet, our partnership, our partners and how we make and, um, and choose to interact with sort of information. And essentially what that means for changing the way that we do our business, sort of shifting the business usual proposition. So if you can think about our economy at the moment, you know, we, we own a lot of stuff, but we're slowly getting this understanding of sharing and access. And Uber, I guess, is one example of that. We're moving from production to a much more distribution. And energy is a great example of that, where in the degree you'll start to learn about, it's not about the old coal fire centralized generation, it's about the rooftop distributed ways of generating and sharing um, electricity. And I guess one of the really interesting things, and there's a bit of an economic theme to this, but fundamentally, you know, we've got this highly balanced program which looks at the environment, um, the social aspects, which are really important, the economy and also the underlying governance and how we make decisions. But we start to, in many ways, turn on the Butan's example of gross domestic happiness, where we're trying to think about gross domestic product as a good economic way of how we're thinking about our society to quality of life. And a lot of the documents that come out of governments at the moment really emphasise wellbeing. And it's wellbeing is that really strong measure. Um, and linked to that fundamentally is our connection to our local environment. So then we start to think, I guess, this last notion of centralised decision making to shared decision making. And that's really how you can get some empowerment. And I guess to many, you know, to a large extent, what you see with the Extinction Rebellion and other protests that have really been happening in the last 12 months is you're getting two young generations coming together to say, let's make this an important issue because quite frankly, you old white men, and I don't like to say that because I'm part of that, if you like, you know, you're, you know, you're the problem, if you like, you know, you're not adapting and you're not making those changes. And so the degree really focuses on how you get about this societal change. So in understanding that, there's a couple of things that we start to do in, in the uh, Masters of Sustainable Development. It's practical and it's practice based. And I guess that goes to the heart of a lot of the, um, the programs that we run with, uh, within the environment area. And within the specific degree of the Masters of Sustainable Development, we'll do some futures thinking, we'll look at innovation, we'll look at how things change and integrate. Uh, we'll use current and real life examples. And so just in this last semester, we were working with Ride City Council and we're getting some presentations and we're getting the students to develop resilience plans on how society can respond. And, you know, COVID just so happened was just another shock that we had to deal with. And before that, it was um, the bushfires and before that, it was the droughts. And so we have these ongoing 
and no shortage of real life examples that we draw on. But we also start to think about the international perspective. And in that you can think about the European New Green Deal, you can look at um, initiatives from many of our students. And we've got about 50% of our students that, that, coming, that come into the degree from, from overseas. And they bring this absolute richness in terms of what's happening in Indonesia, or in Costa Rica, uh, in Africa, in parts of Europe. And it is that practice that really brings out uh, the flavour. So the degree itself has got a range of different components. There's some disciplinary knowledge, there's some lessons from um, government practitioners, from industry practitioners, from the non-government organisation sector. And so we bring that into the degree in terms of guest lectures, fieldwork, uh, practice-based assessments. Um, one of the other areas that we've got a consultancy based um, at the almost the end of your unit, you go out and pretend you're a consultant and you actually answer a real life pressure, a real life issue working with um, with some partners. We do a lot of field trips now under COVID that's a little bit tricky and so there might be some questions and answers that we'll deal with that a little bit later on. But it is that immersed, immersion based learning that we'll try and do and again. The Masters of Sustainable Development is one of those genuinely and an essential transdiscipl transdisciplinary focused degrees. So lots of interactive learning. So you'll be doing lots of workshops as opposed to being lectured to. And so this is the difference really between the undergraduate, often you know, we're teaching you from a lecture room, to a much more uh, interactive tutorial uh, based environment. We get out and about and see things in the real world, whether that's going to different offices or going out into the field and learning and seeing different, different problems and how those problems are, are, are conceptualised. So I, meant, I, I mentioned earlier about the consultancy practice unit, which is almost like the capstone or the end unit, if you like. And these are just some examples where um, students in groups of about two or three just deal with a specific and tailored question. Uh, that uh, various industry partners might have. So often the question is, where do you go when you get your degree? And there's no shortage of places. And, and I say that not just as an, adver an, an advertisement, because when you think about the pressing needs, coming back to the introduction, is, you know, in the next 20 years, this is the game in town. If you're not dealing with managing the environment, managing the economy within that framework of sustainable development, um, you, you'll just be sitting on the sideline. So lots and lots of past students that we've had, these are just a bit of a selection. So we have sitters uh, working in Indonesia in a uh, university. We've got um, uh, Ang, who's working for the United, Nation, United Nations Development Program. Um, Saeed is Save, um, Save the Children International Program in South Sudan. And I guess these are, you know, just various examples of some of the students that we've, uh, international students that we've had, just to give you a bit of a flavour as to where they've ended up in terms of their career. Domestically, we've got lots of them as well. And previously I worked in local government and state government and I frequently employed graduates from uh, Macquarie's um, postgraduate program. Nikki Kerry, who works at North Sydney Council, Stephen Sum, who's at Sydney City, and he actually worked with me at Kringai Council for a, a short time, and a whole bunch of others. So I won't go into this in too much detail because a lot of this is a little bit dry, um, and mostly to give Neil and, and others a bit of a, uh, a chance as well. But it's if, if you don't have a background in, and it's a pretty um, broad background, it's a two year degree. If you've got a cognate or relatively um, relevant uh, bachelor's degree, it's about a year and a half degree. Sometimes you can get away with a year uh, depending on where you are. Types of units that we offer, and this is a bit of a speed reading exercise for you all. So there's some core elements that you sort of need to do depending on your background. Um, and if you don't have that foundational knowledge, you jump into this, uh, what we call the core zone, where you'll do some climate change and adaptation, you'll do some environmental pollution, you'll do units on sustainability, sustainable cities, environmental health, um, an introduction unit to sustainable development. Um, how do you engage with society? 
um, and then that consultancy work practice. And then you've got some other option sets around geographic information systems, and then the ability to do a whole range of other units from uh, the law school, from the business school, from finance, from communications, or across um, the earth and environment or geography and planning. So that's probably a good place to leave it because I think Neil will come up and talk about the Masters of Environment. Awesome. Thank you so much, Peter. That was really interesting. I'm quite intrigued by that degree. Um, just remember, guys, that if you do have any questions, please feel free to put them in our chat um, down in the bottom and we can talk about them once we finish that presentation. All right. Thanks, Neil. Who's going to talk to us about the Masters of Environment? Thank you. And um, yes, I'll just um, share my screen. Okay, how's that looking? Um, look, uh, it would be tempting to go over everything that Peter's already said because there are um, strong parallels between the two programs um, and of course climate change very much on the agenda at the beginning of the year um, with uh, very dramatic events over the Australian summer uh, which have been in part attributed to, to climate change. So I teach the unit um, uh, climate Change Adaptation, ENVS 8104. So that was a nice segue uh, for me to commence my uh, teaching of that unit. Of course, events have uh, overtaken us with COVID-19, but climate change is very much on people's minds. And that's one of the major themes that we explore in the Master of Environment uh, degree. There's several. So um, we give you a fairly thorough understanding of climate change and adaptation and mitigation opportunities. There's a strong um, emphasis on pollution and contamination control and remediation. We have some of the leading environmental contaminant researchers in Australia at Macquarie. Um, and then as sustainability, Peter's given you a fairly good understanding of the work at master's level, master's coursework level in sustainability. And of course there's overlap into the master of environment. So all the good bits of Peter's talk also apply to the master of environment degree. Um, something Peter touched on, and uh, I think there's a lot of wisdom in it, that the cohort is a very important component of our, um, yeah, our, our teaching and learning. Uh, we have, we, we're, it's a remarkable program in not only, not, not, not so much the numbers of international students, although they are high, uh, but the breadth of geographic origin of our international students. Um, <clears throat> when I taught my first subject last year in the master's program, uh, we had uh, 48 students in the degree. We had 28 nationalities represented. Um, and this is a little photograph I took from the back of the classroom where a group was reporting back to the class on an issue in, I think it was deforestation around the world, I put them in the group. I divide the students up by nationality. This group uh, had a student from um, South America, Papua New Guinea, Colombia, uh, Central America, the Philippines and Japan. And they were sharing their expertise and their personal experience of issues that are frustrating the management of biodiversity in the home countries. And that's something that, you know, you can't teach that stuff. It's, it's something that emerges organically when people come together with a similar passion around environmental restoration um, and uh, sharing their expertise from, from where they've come from. And my job sometimes is just to get out of the way and let that happen. So I just want to make that point straight up that, that the international perspective that our international students bring is an enormous asset to these programs. What we can do um, is put you in touch with the latest ideas and research in this field, but also take you to some pretty spectacular places. And um, you know, I always feel like clicking to our uh, Director of Teaching and Learning, Kerry, because she's um, she convenes this particular course where we go to Jervis Bay for 10 days 
And um, the students love that, not only because it's uh, working in a fantastic place, but um, it's immersive learning. So uh, from, from, from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep, you're in the environment, learning field techniques, um, thinking about how to approach sampling, but also working with other students and staff. Um, and the amount of learning that goes on in that really sort of intensive mode is fantastic. Um, so that's a highlight of the degree. Another one is giving you some really good sort of um, empirical skills, not only field skills, um, but also spatial information analysis. And we have a program in geographic information sciences. We have some of the leading people in um, uh, GIS and remote sensing in the world. Um, and uh, we have a strong program in remote sensing. And that's something you'll be exposed to. You have opportunity if you're, if you're new to it. We have a, an introductory course. If you've, if you've done some training, we have an advanced course that you can select. Um, so um, uh, there's, a lot, uh, there's a lot of opportunity in the program, both from uh, the expert staff who are teaching, the students who are coming from a range of backgrounds, uh, professionally and geographically, um, and then you know field lab uh, computer uh, components. It's an exciting program. Peter's gone over this stuff, and so I won't um, you know I won't go over it again. Others other to other than to reiterate the point that how much of the program you do depends a bit on what your background is, and you can certainly um, send your questions to us about uh, how much of the course you can be, um, you know, wh where you jump into the course, essentially. Um, uh, so the um, foundation zone uh, for students who might come in from a completely different background, because we don't assume knowledge. Um, if you're coming in uh, to the Master of Environment as, as, a, as an accountant or as, as a, you know, a completely different field, uh, you'll come in and, and, and do these, what we call 600 level units that give you that foundation that you need. Um, and they're the same array of units between the Master of Sustainable Development and the Master of Environment. Uh, core zone, uh, that's where we specialise. We have a different range of some overlap with the sustainable development, but uh, there are also units, environmental remediation, environmental planning, uh, field methods in environmental science. Um, and here's the geographic information units that I mentioned previously. And then flexible zone, again, similar to, um, to the Master of Sustainable Development, although you can choose units from biology and um, geology as a component of that, um, those, that sort of open-ended flexible zone of the degree. Um, okay.